how it's going. I will, I will make this very brief. Uh, listen, many of you know I'm William Sun. I am also a superstar. I was uh, Cable's hottest star in 2004 uh, and, and, and whatever. Uh, my dad, around the time he died, I'm pretty sure he didn't like my act. He actually told me, so I don't like your act. And it didn't make me feel bad because uh, even though I'm a driven comedian, and it, was, it wasn't the kind of thing I did for my father's love because it was readily available to me. Uh, and it gave me a lot of strength to go through a lot of very uh, confusing and difficult times. My dad used to say uh, that his mind was his own. They could put him in a prison, they could do pretty much anything they wanted to him, but that his mind was his own. That anything that you read about him on paper was almost insignificant relative to what his inner life consisted of. That he was a very uh, deep person in his own way and to his own liking. And one of the main things he raised me, uh, one of the main pillars of his, uh, what, what do you call it, upbringing, was that uh, you shouldn't really worry too much about what happens outside of yourself. Because what's happening inside of yourself is oftentimes uh, more important to yourself. He died before I got to know him as an adult. I don't know how he socialized necessarily. I don't know all of his likes and dislikes, but I had glimpses. One of the glimpses was when he was burying his own father and we were cleaning out his father's house and in the drawer, his, he never got, he didn't get along with his father for many years. And in the drawer, next to his father's bed, like readily available, was my dad's acceptance letter into Brown. And I found it. I said, hey dad, look at this. And I remember him looking at it for a long time and him being amazed that uh, his father had kept it. And I remember how important it was for him to reconcile whatever issues he had with his father before his father passed. And I remember feeling lucky that when he died, I didn't have those kind of issues. He did a good job. Uh, and one of the things he did, one of the many, 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 many things he did that was incredibly empowering, and I'm, I'm not trying to talk tomorrow. All right, I'll do it. Oh, my goodness, Lady Tomorrow, let me wind this up. But one of, the, one of the most important things that he did, I never realized, you know, I'm a pretty conservative dude as an adult. And I, I never realized uh, why my father raised me in a hotbed of hippie and communist activity. Uh, <laughs> what it was that he found here, uh, and that... And that and it was very informative in my life. Actually, it reminds me of something he told me in his life. He grew up in South Carolina and then in Washington, D.C. And you guys were talking about how difficult it was for black people to break barriers, and I know his time at Brown was traumatic for him. Whatever happened, it wasn't like Brown was uh, a place where there was a lot of black dudes. And uh, it was whatever happened was traumatic. Uh, when he was living in the South, he would tell me stories that were, had a duality to him. His, great, his, his grandfather was rich. However, if white people would come to the house, the adults would send the black kids to the back because they didn't know what was going to happen whenever they had visitors. Uh, and in contrast to that, I've never had that relationship with a white person. As a matter of fact, many whites fear me. Uh, <laughs> And that largely has to do with my upbringing here. That, that nobody was a stranger here. That pretty much everybody that I knew had an open home to me. Uh, and that everybody that I knew had a hand in raising me or keeping me safe. And it's something that the that very few people of any color or anywhere else 
might be able to say they have to the extent that I personally can say I have. And uh, so, in honoring my dad, i got to say thank you to all of you for giving him a context where he can just exist and, and be a good dude. Because to be a good dude, as uh, many good dudes have shown you before, it's just not a, a comfortable thing to be. It's a very hard thing to aspire to. And uh, so thanks for honoring him, because sometimes it's a pretty lonely, quiet road when you make a decision to try to transcend your own demons or be good or whatever it is that he was trying to do here with these hippies and communists. <laughs> But uh, the, the fact that you guys are honoring my father, it says a lot about the school, which I never was a student at, but it was definitely a setting in my life. It says a lot about the community, and it says a lot about my dad. And I appreciate you, and thank you.